Um, Castell at College, we started a partnership about a year ago, um, in particular looking at women's leadership um, and the leadership values and traits that are necessary to be successful in what I consider the most dynamic industry on the planet, right? Where can you go from washing dishes to owning the facility to owning multiple units? Um, it, it really is the kind of area that, you know, in the restaurant sector, for example, nine out of 10 restaurant owners started in an entry level hourly position. Uh, and so, you know, what you can do in the hotel sector, there's so many different areas to hospitality. To me, it really, um, uh, it, it, it's right. You know, what used to be a 10 year trajectory, it's gonna be three or four years. Uh, you're gonna be able to move through this industry very quickly with the vast array of skills that you get through your education. And, and that gets me excited. Uh, for those of you I haven't had a chance to meet, I got started in higher ed as a trial attorney. I defended over $100 million in litigation against hotels, restaurants, and nightclubs in Las Vegas. And I actually started teaching to figure out what would work in a trial. And so I, I point that out just because you got some amazing women up here who have a lot of different pathways to where they've gotten and how they've gotten there. And they're gonna share those with you, but there's no cookie cutter, right? This is an industry where you can make what you want of it and you can really achieve anything that you want to achieve. And so we're gonna listen to their stories. Candace uh, Johnson here, she's the Vice President of Feasibility and Analytics for Benchmark. Um, she's gonna go through and introduce our panel all. They're going to introduce themselves. And uh, at the end of this, we, we want this to be engaging. We want you to ask questions. Uh, so they're going to be given some information, but this really is a time for you to suck knowledge out of them. All right. So take full advantage of that. And so with that, I'm going to turn you over to Candice. And again, thank you so much for all the work that you guys do for our industry. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. We're so excited to be here um, to have a live panel. Uh, typically, we've been doing these uh, over Zoom for the last, you know, all of last year and some of the ones, in fact, this year. So it's so um, amazing to be in a room with all of you. Um, and just wanted to thank Dean Hardegree, Dr. Ol uh, Mr. Galpern for inviting us today and for supporting Castell at college. It's a really, um, the Castell program is a really great program um, supporting women in leadership um, and we're just so happy to be here and um, to be at the university today. Um, so I'm going to, um, I guess, first introduce myself, Candace Johnson. Um, I work with uh, Benchmark Hospitality in, we're actually based in Houston, but I work here in Denver and Prior to that, I was with a company based in Denver for about 14 years, Destination Hotels and Two Roads Hospitality. So I've been uh, in Denver for quite a while with a background primarily in real estate um, and in hospitality finance. So I'm going to just go through quickly and let each of the panelists introduce themselves just with their name and their title, and then we will also get to learn more about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis after that. Hi everyone, I hope that you're having a good day. My name is Andra Alvarez. I'm the general manager of the Hyatt House Denver Lakewood at Belmar. Um, I, my management group is Concord Hospitality and I've been with them for almost eight years. Hi everybody, I'm Carmen Almos. I am the senior vice president of asset management for Mission Hill Hospitality, a KSL company as they like to be known. Um, and I moved to Denver three months ago from Atlanta. Some of you may remember me, I spoke on the panel last year and I was based in Atlanta then, but I am now a resident of Denver. Welcome to Denver. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I am Claudia Alvarado. I'm the analytics manager for SDR. I've been also, they like to be known as part of the Coaster Group. Um, so I've been with them for about six years. And before that, I worked in hotel operations, but originally I'm from Honduras, if my accent didn't give me away. Um, but yeah, I've been in them for about 12 years now. Okay, fantastic. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about how we're gonna structure our conversation. We're gonna do 30 minutes of a panel, uh, of this panel discussion. And uh, Claudia has volunteered to keep our time for us. So at the end of 30 minutes, we're gonna break four um, four little groups so we'll just count off, you know, one, two, three, four, and then go to different areas of the room where we can have um, smaller conversations. 
and then we'll we'll switch that up. We'll do that for 15 minutes, and then switch that up and do a second breakout uh, session for another 15 minutes. Um, so you'll get to spend time, you know, individually with each of us, um, with well, each with two of us. Um, so let's get started. So we've heard now what what everyone's title is. But what does that mean? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what is your role and what is a typical day for you? So again, my name is Andra and I'm a general manager of the Hyatt House in Belmar. So what I really do as more of, I guess, a seasoned um, general manager with the Concord team, I've been with them a while. So outside of our normal emails, reports, AR, AP, HR, um, or accounts payable, accounts receivable, human resources, um, and then following up on emails. We're in budget season right now, but um, as a more seasoned Hyatt GM, I do mentor and train some of the other GMs within our system. We have 15 different Hyatt hotels within Concord Hospitality. So I help them get into all of their, pull the reports and whatnot. Um, but the most important things for me, um, I sit on quite a few boards and councils. So I'm the general manager advisory council member for our Western region, which um, com is comprised of about 15 hotels. Um, Concord has what we call C groups, and these are our initiatives. So I am, I was the co-founder and basically co-chair of what we call C-FIT. Um, so I work on wellness, which is mind, body, and spirit. So everything wellness. I also sit on the pride team for Concord. And then in addition, I am on the board for uh, women in leadership for Concord. So our C women group, and that's how I was introduced to Castell College or re referred to that. So most of my days now are really interesting because I sit on a, a bunch of different subcommittees and whatnot, you know, to make our company as a whole better with over 115 hotels. You know, we've grown um, quickly. And so we want to make sure that, you know, every group is served and we even have a C pets group. Um, so that's what I do on a basis. So not as much hospitality stuff I do mentor my team and so now they can be at the hotel and take care of our guests and take care of the other associates because they've been trained very well to know what I would what they would do without me there because I'm not always there so that's what I do a little bit of everything very cool very impressive way more impressive than me um but uh you know for me I always say that if you cut open my wrists you'll find hospitality in my blood my parents immigrated to the u.s from south africa when i was 15 and my dad the true american dream story had 1500 dollars in his pocket kind of have this debate whether it was a thousand or 1500 but nonetheless a very small amount of money leased a 16 room motel in kingsport tennessee and moved our entire family into the motel so we did everything we did pool maintenance i learned about chlorine and how to overstock a pool. Uh, we mowed the lawn, uh, we did night shift, we did front desk, we served breakfast, we evicted guests because they were all weekly stay guests who never had money and had a very colorful story about why they couldn't pay $125 to stay there. Um, so I grew up in the motel business and my journey's been a long one. When I was your age, I did the front desk at a Comfort Inn. I worked the breakfast shift from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So I have seen the good and bad parts of hospitality. Uh, today, as SVP of Asset Management, I oversee a portfolio of hotels, select service hotels. We buy uh, anything from ACs to Spring Hill Suites. Concord is actually our longtime partner. Um, and so I sit as the owner's representative. So I go to Andra's hotel and boss her around and tell her everything that's wrong. Um, but uh, I, you know, uh, asset manage a portfolio of hotels, make sure that we're performing on budget, make sure that any renovation projects are on schedule. Um, and I act as the owner's representative on site for any of our hotels. So that's sort of the gist of my my position, and I also opine on any new deals that we're buying for our company. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Impressive. Um, well, my story, I attempted to go into med school and then realized that I wasn't cut for it, like blood will ache me out way too much. So I had to figure out what else I wanted to do. So that's how I got into the hospitality um, industry. Right now I'm working as the analytics manager for the financial performance team. 
So if we break it down backwards, so our work for SCR, we have data from like over 70,000 hotels. Um, and from the financial performance team, which means that we work with two main reports uh, on profitability, um, just trying to figure out where the money is coming from and where it's going. And then my title, analytics manager, is just a fancy way to say that I'm a jack of many trades, but master of none. <laughs> so basically, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I will start with a few hours of meetings with teams, uh, could be in London, in Nashville, some, uh, where we have our headquarters, or someone in Brazil with a question from a client, uh, trying to solve some of that, working with the uh, business development teams, with IT, and then a few hours for data crunch, a few other hours to try to find companies that we could do partnerships with and get more data to enrich the analysis that we do. If there's some time left, then I will uh, write some articles um, or come up with uh, ideas for presentations and whatnot. Uh, on top of that, because I am a bit of a social butterfly, I'm a part of the culture ambassadors team. So we are just trying to promote um, cultural awareness throughout the company, given that we have offices in 15 different countries. So we're trying to bank on that. And other than that, um, just trying to keep the team going together and uh, feeling not burned out right now. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, very impressive panel. Um, so let's talk about some of the issues and, you know, we're going to talk somewhat about um, things that are pertain to women in leadership, but I think a lot of the topics pertain to everyone, no matter who you are, you're going to struggle with work-life balance, right? So let's talk about, about that. We've all struggled with that. We've all failed in that area at least once and figured out over time how to, um, create strategies around creating that balance. So we'd love to hear um, from each of you on how you manage that and when, what are some best practices around establishing uh, work-life balance. So again, my name is Andra and for me, um, it really is wellness and it can be anything from mind, body and spirit, but for me especially it's running. Um, from when the time with my kids are, are younger, I have an 18 year old and an 11 year old. So when they were little, I would run on the treadmill. But now for me, um, I am a, a race pacer. So that means that if someone has a certain goal in a race, I pace them to that. I'm the one that holds the ridiculous kind of yellow sign. I'm also a running coach. So this morning I was at Wash Park with a group called Rev Run and I'm a, a run coach. Um, on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And then after I leave here, I'm going to go to the Clement Park and, and uh, coach for the Colorado Coyotes. They're a seven to 14 year old group. So running in specific has been like a life changer for me. If I start my day out with some kind of a workout, then and, and even Orange Theory or even something that's less cardio, even lifting, for me, that really clears my mind and helps me to have a great day. Now, wellness, as we see it at Concord, is mind, body, spirit. So that can be spiritual wellness, that can be financial wellness you know, whatever it means to you, maybe reading a little bit um, in the mornings or in the afternoons or something that can just calm your overall spirit and mind. That helps me a lot because hospitality is busy and every day can look a little different. So if I start my day out the way that I see it is right, then I have a really great day afterwards. So you're probably a little bit more balanced than I am. Uh, I work for a company that's in startup mode. So we are at the office until 2 a.m. Um, I think last week we averaged 3.30 and I was the first one to leave every night. Um, I have a two-year-old and a husband. I'm not sure who needs more time, the husband or the two-year-old. But um, for me, I what I've come to realize is that some days I'm going to get an F at home and some days I'm going to get an A at work. And I've had to find a balance between averaging an A- minus somewhere in between so I take the F's on some days at home and I take the A's on some days at work, but then I have to alternate. Some days I have to leave the office at four and make it home for bedtime and bath time. So it's it's figuring out where you can push priorities, which days you can push it at work or which days you can push it at home. But I think it's really critical, as Andra said, to find sort of what keeps you grounded. I do try to work out at lunch or, you know, trying to stay healthy. Um, during the day with how I eat. I travel a lot. 
I just got off a plane this morning and came straight to the panel uh, from Atlanta. I was in Atlanta looking at two of our hotels. And so for me today, the balance is going to be getting home at six o'clock and having probably half a bottle of red wine. But, you know, you, you do what you can when you can. Um, so holding on to that thread that keeps you sane. Um, and I hate that I'm working for the weekend, but sometimes that is how it gets to be. And you really have to define your sanity on Saturdays and Sundays. So, yeah, speaking of terms that uh, do not quite click for me is the work life balance, because I don't think it's a balance. I'm a numbers person, so of course I ran the numbers and we spend about 48% of our week at work. So, and then if you discount that time that you're sleeping, then that gives you about like 20 something percent of your time for your personal life. So it's not so much of the balance itself, but it's like setting healthy boundaries and prioritizing accordingly when needed. So one time when I actually fell at all of those things was last year, uh, we had this project. We were working with two of the analysts in London and we basically had a relay. Um, I will be working until like midnight, pass it on to, to them who were starting the, the day. And then when it was the end of the day, it was the beginning of mine. And then I will take over and keep on working. That went enough for a week, realized that was not sustainable. So we needed to actually set boundaries. So we got that out the door and we we're like, OK, let's take some time off and then keep each other accountable that we're going to work the right hours for the time being. Unless there's like another fire that we need to put out, but let's keep the boundaries. So it was like prioritizing at the moment, like th that needed to get out the door. But other than that, like we we're like, okay, we're going to take what we actually can handle during normal hours. Again, thankfully, <laughs> the company is really respectful of our office hours, weekend and all that. But uh, but yeah, it's like you just got to be set on what uh, your boundaries are and then on how you're going to recharge. For me, it's staying away from screens. So I will do some painting, just hang out with friends, go climbing or something that will just like make me use the other side of my brain. Great. And I think um, at the previous company I worked for, we talked about work-life balance a lot, but we also talked about work-life integration. So there are weekends and there are evenings when you're going to have to work. Um, but there's also, you know, Monday afternoon, you need to take your daughter to a doctor's appointment, then you go do that. So like finding a way um, to integrate uh, you know, work in life because it is all it does kind of all run together at some point. <laughs> so we, we talked about it as work life integration as opposed to a, a balance. Um, OK, so moving on to the next one, we have a lot of um, students in the room that are getting ready to embark on their careers in our industry. Um, so wanted to learn from our panel sort of what is the best advice that you received um, or maybe the most uh, the move for you that may, had the most meaningful impact when you were going out and embarking on your career in the industry. So I have a funny story because it kind of switches. I have remembered this through the years, but over the last few years, kind of a switch. But when I was in college, I went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, and this was in the, the late 90s. And so I had a professor that I remember right before spring break, this was, I think it was a Thursday or a Friday class, I can't remember, but a lot of the students were already on spring break um, from C Boulder and he assigned a paper that was due for the first day when we got back. And of course, everyone was grumbling like, you know, professor, you know, like this is spring break, some people are already on break, how are they gonna get their paper done? And he said, in real life, there is no break. And I remember that forever. However, in the last few years, that mindset is more of an old school mindset, I think, and that, you know, it's different, just like the work-life balance or integration. There are some times on your weekends that you have to work, but in life, there really is a break and we can enjoy that. But I never got um, that professor and that specific like statement and all students that really didn't love that you know but I'm glad I went to class that day so I could get my paper done so I could do well in the class but in the meantime there really is a break you can take a and then set healthy boundaries so I think the best advice I got when I was in college and I don't know what year most of you guys are but I had a professor say to us on the first day of school work hard for four years work hard for the 
of your lives and truer words have never been spoken because you know graduating college with good grades gave me a leg up on some of my peers and I unfortunately graduated college in 2008 which was the height of and I knew a lot of people that had given me advice had said find an love and you know go do that and the industry I happened to love was hotels and in 2008 it was impossible to find a hotel job and I had you know followed the advice of work hard I'd graduated with a great GPA and with the top of my class and then I was like well shit I've done everything they said and now I can't even find a job um, but I held to the fact that I loved hotels and I found a way to reinvent myself in the hotel space. And I went to work for a bankruptcy lawyer who represented hotel owners through the 2008 crash. And he was probably the best lawyer I've ever seen in my life because he represented mom and pop owners for five chapter 11 bankruptcy. So they were trying to keep their hotels and still uh, like an obligation with the lender. And what I did was I would go to the hotels and I'd come up with a plan of reorganization and I'd go back to the lawyer in the court and say, this owner can keep their hotel by, you know, cutting X amount of costs out of the hotel and this will be a viable financial option and this is how they'll be able to pay back their loan. And that really positioned me to stay in the hotel sector and put me where I am today. So, you know, if you have hotels, stay the course find a way to stay in the industry because you'll keep leveling up if you keep challenging yourself. For me, the job search after graduation was slightly tricky in the sense that not only was I stressed out about finding a job that will match my criteria, which was basically like revenue management or HR, like I was slightly set on those, but I was on a student visa, which meant that I only had about three months after graduation or else but it doesn't like I had to go back home. So I was uh, sending out applications left and right. I uh, had done all the things right in, in undergrad, like going to career fairs and everything, but nothing would land. I had about two or three weeks left, and then I get an email from housekeeping at a hotel where I had done an internship, uh, giving me a heads up that they're going to have an opening for housekeeping supervisor. I was like, ah, that is not as sludgy. Here I was trying to be all, all uh, <laughs> Thank you about it, but I'm like, okay, I'll give it a chance. So I met up with him and the manager of HR. The manager of HR knew about what I wanted to do, and she was like, this is not what you want, but you should give it a chance. So, of course, I didn't want to go back home then. So I was like, okay, let's, I'll, I apply, I got the job. And it actually ended up being that the less slashy job of, uh, opportunity was where I actually struggled because that one year has been like, the most rewarding that I had in my entire career so far. That one year is where I had the opportunity to learn like hands -on leadership experience. Like it's not about all the theoretical that you will get in a in a classroom. Like I was dealing with the teams and trying to figure out uh, ways to communicate with people from different countries. Like we had like over 15 in that in that department alone. So conflict resolution, effective communication approach, you name it. I even ended up working for like Kaizen, like efficiency <laughs> projects and whatnot. So like the things that I did not even thought that I would uh, get the uh, access to by working in housekeeping, everything at the fingertips. So it was worth it, worth taking the risk. Excellent. And how are we doing on time? So that's, uh, I don't know, it hasn't run, so. Okay, so we can keep going. Um, okay, so another another couple of topics that might be interesting to this group, um, you know, in terms of getting out there and being a career, um, networking for one. So how do you build a network? Networking is a great way to find out about opportunities and to um, learn about other aspects of the industry that you may or may not know about already and, you know, how those work. and. and Thing that you might be interested in, um, as well as finding, you know, people that know about opportunities. So building a network um, is is a great way to start. And I know, um, let's talk to Claudia. Had some thoughts about that. Uh, networking. Yes, for sure. It, it's also 
related to what I had just said before, that it was like a random opportunity and you just take it and see what, what it leads. So I was in grad school doing my grad assistantship and my supervisor comes and she like, save the date. What? Like, oh, we'll just have a guest and we want you to give her the campus. So save the date, the guest comes, I, um, we start going on the campus tour and it starts pouring rain. So what do you do? At the door, at the building, whatever school is hosted and whatnot. So the campus tour took just like five minutes from the front door and then it was just like time to network. So I just started like asking questions about her job, her company and herself because for no, like in networking, like for me, is like you gotta build like a meaningful connection, not only like a transactional kind of connection. So I was just like getting her back, um, we'll tell her a bit about my story. Then, in fact, a few months ago, I realized that that was like a blessing in disguise because this person that I gave the campus tour to recommended me for the current job that I have because this, this guest is the president of our current company. Wow. So it just goes to show, like, if you actually like show your genuinely and like with again like genuine curiosity, you don't know what those conversations can can bring along later on your in your life. Agreed. So does anyone else want to add anything about networking? I think you guys are very fortunate in this program because you have professors that are you know, well connected in the hospitality industry and people want to help. They want to mentor you guys. You know, we're old now. Like we look back and we're like, man, I wish I was still in college. I wish, you know, we have to live vicarious, vicariously through you guys. And I think that looking back, I wish I had had the resources that you guys have and your professors where you could go to them and say, you know, Dean Hardegree, like, could you reach out to Claudia? Because I'm interested in in the analytical side of hospitality, I don't necessarily want to work in a hotel. And I'm sure Claudia would be more than happy to help you guys. So you guys have a, a real and a rare opportunity to have direct access to people who work in hospitality today. And I, my recommendation would be to utilize that. You know, like I think when I spoke on the panel last year, a couple of the students reached out to me after that panel and I was like thrilled to be able to help them or put them in touch with somebody that could help further them, you know, utilize that, really make use of it and reach out to us and we'll do whatever we can. And we'll reach out to our network and try to help you guys even further. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, uh, the other topic is, you know, if you're coming out of, out of school and you don't necessarily have the resume built, how do you go out into the industry and show competence and put yourself out there um, and really, you know, make a name for yourself and really kind of get that, get your foot in the door that first time. Uh, I think Andra maybe had some thoughts about that. Definitely, if you, if you can and you have the time to, like, if you're wanting, depending on what in hospitality you'd like to do, if you would like to work in a hotel, I've actually seen some students that have worked at a hotel with me that have decided, okay, so maybe you know if you can if you have the time outside of your busy student time to to actually go and seek a job in hospitality with you know a hospitality you know a hotel right here on campus like I would say that that is a great place to start so then you can see all the different possibilities and find out is it outside of the hotel is it inside the hotel like what is it that you love and what is it that you love to do so if you can um, you know, see it firsthand, you know, before graduation, I think that that's a good place to start. So that way you've already had some resume experience. But if that's not something that you're able to do, if you have many credits, if you take, you know, if you, if you're in sports or, you know, whatnot, then I would say that, you know, obviously having that you're in hospitality, a hospitality program, then those go to the top of my pile when it comes to resumes and applications, you know, for jobs, even if there's not any experience with it. Because um, we're looking for happy and bubbly and extroverted type people, but you can also be an introvert and be in hotels. I would say that I'm an introverted expert or an introverted extrovert, but my kids laugh and they're like, absolutely, you are not. Um, but, you know, you have to be on stage every day when you're at the hotel. So I feel very comfortable talking to guests and whatnot. And 
probably strangers, but in a natural setting, if I were to attend a party, I wouldn't just like go up to everyone and say, oh, hi, you know, here I am. So, um, but go and experience it if you can, just to make sure that that's your love and kind of figure it out from there because not everyone wants to be in the brick and mortar building. Um, sometimes you want to be outside of that and still work in the hospitality field. Okay, we have five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I would say absolutely. And and even outside of your classroom, I'm, I'm if you are involved in sports and involved involved in other clubs and other activities, there are a lot of skills that you're building um, outside of the classroom that you can also leverage when you're talking uh, to you know potential employers about leadership skills and time management skills and all the things that you've learned. You know, just being in college alone is is very challenging and you know how you manage through that you're developing a lot of skills that are valuable to getting out um, getting out there so so um, here's an interesting question a little bit maybe more specific um, for women um, the path to leadership is a very rocky road sometimes and we know statistically as um, as you kind of climb the corporate ladder, there are fewer and fewer men. It's mostly, uh, you know, the, the numbers aren't very strong at the top for women. Um, so how do you, how, um, or can you tell us about a time when you've experienced when you're the only woman in the room or the only woman at the table or the only woman on a team? And how do you, you know, how does it feel? And um, maybe share some of your experiences there. So for me, I, I don't think I noticed it except for back in, I think it was 2017, I was at a Hyatt Global Conference and I had sent a picture, someone at the head of the table had taken like a photo and we put it on Instagram and my mom texted me and she was like, Andra, are you like the only like, like girl in the room? And I looked around and I was like, no, but you know, this definitely look different at an operations event versus like a sales event where you probably would see a few more females. So I guess I have never really noticed it before. Um, but with that said, you know, that was a few years ago and corporations like Hyatt and Concord, you know, and other companies are focusing on always hiring the best candidates, but making sure that they diversify, that they look at other groups. Um, so that way, you know, at the next conference, I'm sure there'll be more females in the room than, um, and, and you know, for us also to put ourselves out there and apply for the positions and don't just assume that maybe you're not the best candidate or you know whatnot to put yourself out there a little bit. But that was kind of eye-opening, and and there were a lot of men there. And uh, um, but I like that corporations and companies in general, outside of hospitality as well, are focusing on more of a diver diverse group and always looking for the best candidate. Um, but it's not always the same, you know, same type of person, so. Great, and I'm sure that Carmen, being from, because I, I also was in the asset management field, yeah. so I'm guessing that you may have experienced this, and I know it wasn't on your list, but um, have you experienced this? Yeah, so it, at Mission Hill, I was the only female in the company. Um, and I'm still the only person of color in the company, but we recently hired a VP of asset management. She reports to me and I hired a woman um, because I think it's important for us to give other women a leg up in the industry. Obviously you have to be qualified and have the right experience. Um, but for me, you know, I know you guys have only known me like 20 minutes. I'm sure, you know, I'm not the most soft-spoken person in the room, um, but it's, you know, it, it's been difficult in my field because typically I am the only woman everywhere I go at KSL, which is based in Denver. It is heavily white male dominated. Um, so it's the person who goes into the room and to eat at the team. You know, I'm not important enough or I should let the guys handle it, but I now go the opposite way and I sit at the head of the table and I make sure that my voice is heard. Um, but I think in today's world, we're very fortunate. I met with the CEO of Davidson Hotel Group yesterday, and one of the things we spent a long time talking about was how do we bring up other women 
of color or other women in the hospitality industry? You know, how do we raise them up to be leaders? And, you know, we're looking at you guys. You guys are the next generation that we want to bring into those SVP, VP positions. Um, and so we're trying to find ways to grow you guys. And I'm excited to get into our breakout panels because I want to hear from you guys what you think you need from us as senior leaders in today's industry to help you move into the next phase as you're graduating, as you're looking for jobs, what can we do to serve you? But I think as a woman, it's important to call out when men kind of, you know, dismiss you or when they do something that's a probably not in the best or most advisable position. I told a funny story uh, at the last panel about, a, you know, a guy that completely dismissed me in a group of men, uh, even though I was standing in the middle of those group of men. And for me, I always say I am the domino. So when a man does that to me, I always call him out and make sure that everybody hears what I'm saying. Because when a domino falls, it leaves no choice but for the rest to fall behind it. So be the domino in today's industry as women. Excellent. So I assume that we've we've reached our time. OK. OK, folks, well, I think it's almost the end of uh, class time, almost 315. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Eric Dios, and I'm the department chair in the School of Hospitality. And just a couple of closing announcements. Number one, let's give a great round of applause to all of our fantastic panelists. What a great conversation today. And second, I believe we have some gifts for our panelists. I believe a couple of students were going to uh, uh, kind of kind of hand out a, a gift to all of our to our panelists. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, third, just quick announcement. Um, in the next week or so, there'll be a survey that will be uh, forwarded to all the, the students that came today, and I'll be forwarding those to the, the instructors to give a, a chance for it to give some feedback, um, some key learnings, and to make sure there's some good value in this program, in which I know there actually is. And the last, would you mind just kind of giving a quick announcement about the pitch contest? So we're part of uh, Castella College and Castell also works with uh, another organization called She Has a Deal. Um, and this year I'm going to be mentoring a student from uh, DU that's pitching. So I'll tell you guys about it. It's a pitch competition for, sorry guys, female uh, college students interested in hotel ownership. So you would pitch a hotel deal that you would want to buy. So like, say you wanted to buy the Spring Hill here in Denver, you would pitch that deal to a panel of judges. And the panel of judges is like the president of Marriott, the CEO of Noble Investment Group in Atlanta. These are like big deals in the hospitality industry. Um, the pitch competition takes place over a course of four months, I believe, and you will be assigned a mentor. Hopefully it will be me, uh, but you'll be assigned a mentor and I will mentor you through the underwriting process of looking and buying a hotel. And the winning team gets a $50,000 equity stake in the deal that they pitched successfully. So I highly encourage you guys to apply. Um, DU has a lot of representation in the program and I would love to see somebody from MSU participate for next year's competition. Um, and please reach out to Dr. Olson or Scott for my contact information and I'll be more than happy to help you guys in whatever way we can. We have a, uh, an internship program coming up at Mission Hill Hospitality um, that I can get you guys connected and get you in the application process for that. And KSL Capital has an internship program every summer as well. Highly encourage you guys to apply to that. It's phenomenal and they pay a lot of money, so. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, at last year I um, I didn't participate and she had it has a deal, but I did watch the final presentations. It was truly amazing. It was it was really cool. Um, so anyone that wants to get involved in that, I highly recommend. Um, but thank you so much for all of your time. It was so like I said, so great to be here in person with all of you and hopefully um, everyone learned a lot. I learned a lot from all of you. So thanks so much for all of your time. 
all right. thank you, everyone. have a great afternoon. thank you.